Hi, my name is Maral Pogazemi, and I'm a graphic designer with Iranian roots living and working all over the world. Most of my work are information and data-driven projects, such as hands-on design projects or organizing conferences that focus on data visualization and visual storytelling. In the past couple of years, I worked a lot on bilingual design projects. Working with English and Farsi text naturally doubles the design challenge, not only because the text flows from two different directions, but sometimes it is a bit tricky to find fonts that work well together in both languages. Don't let this scare you. Design challenges are fun. Most of the time, they make your final designs more compelling. In the next few minutes, I will show you a few technical details when working with left-to-right and right-to-left text in Adobe InDesign CC. Even if you don't use Adobe InDesign, these settings can be good to know, since a lot of the design apps are quite similar. First, we want to insert the two different languages in our document. In this case, I'm using placeholder text, also known as lorem ipsum, for both Farsi and English. Lorem ipsum text is free, and I have added links to it in the resources section. We create a separate text box for each language. Then, we copy and paste each lorem ipsum text into a text box. You can see that the English text is displayed with no problem, but something is not quite right with our Farsi text. It is not showing up. All we see are these weird pink boxes. But don't worry, we can fix this. The text is showing up as pink boxes because the default font is Latin and not Arabic or Farsi. So the first thing you want to do is to change to a Farsi or Arabic font. Great, the text is visible. But it's still impossible to read. Each letter is shown individually. The Farsi text is not flowing from the right, and the font size could be a bit bigger to match the English text. To have the letters become words, you have to select the text box and open the paragraph toolbox. There is a little arrow that has some more hidden features. In there, you have to tick Adobe World Reader Paragraph Composer. Voila, your text is readable now. But it can be better, so let's align the Farsi text to the right. Generally, Farsi font always looks smaller, even if you select the exact same font size for both languages. So we want to increase either the Farsi font or decrease the English font. With these three tweaks, you're on the safe side, and you can build your design around the text. Bear in mind that the concept of serif, fonts that look like Times New Roman, and sans serif, fonts that look like Arial, does not apply to Farsi or Arabic script. Hi. My name is Richard Kawaji, and I'm the creative manager at Small Media. Being from Beirut, I've had the chance to work on a range of bilingual and sometimes even multilingual projects that include Arabic, Farsi, English, and French. In the next couple of minutes, I will share with you three of the most important design tips and challenges I have learned along the way. I will be using Amnesty International as a case study, going through how best to work with right to left, translation, and typographic matchmaking. Working with more than one language can be challenging, especially when we work with Arabic or Farsi. Not only are we dealing with a different alphabet, but also the reading and writing direction changes from left to right to the other way around. So it's really important to be aware of the changes that we need to do to accommodate that switch. Let's have a look at Amnesty International's logo. In the countries that read left to right, the candle is on the right, but in the Arabic version of their logo, the candle is on the left. So the Arabic version simply mirrors the original. Sometimes, if not most of the time, English to Arabic translations don't amount to the same number of words. At times, the Arabic translation will have more words than the original English name, but the other way around can happen too. Let's take the Amnesty International logo for example. Those two English words have the equivalent translation of three Arabic words. If this happens, don't panic. It is part of the nature of language and we can always work around it. In Amnesty International's case, they chose to make the upper part of the Arabic logo bold and elongate the letter spacing of the lower part to make it more in line with the original English counterpart. Choosing the right Arabic typeface not only helps maintaining the look and feel of the organization, but aligns the tonality and voice throughout. As Stephanie mentioned in the previous lesson, it is as important to keep the message and communication consistent in Arabic as it is in English. 
For this reason, Amnesty International chose a bold and elongated typeface for their Arabic headlines that goes very well with the trade Gothic font they use for their Latin alphabet. Choosing the perfect Arabic typeface can be a difficult process, simply because there aren't enough free fonts that look both professional and legible. Amnesty International decided to go with a paid font called Arabic Frutiger that matches the trade Gothic typeface they use on all their non-Arabic branding. In the resources section, I have listed my favorite places to buy Arabic and Farsi fonts, and the best places to find really good free fonts.